Osteoarthritis is actually very common, and as a result, there are a lot of different treatment options out there. In today's video, I'm gonna go through what the evidence tells us about which treatment options are the best, and which treatment options don't work so well when it comes to osteoarthritis. I'm gonna start right now. Very recently, in 2018, the Royal Australian College of GPs did a huge study on all of the treatment options available for osteoarthritis, and they broke them down into five different categories. They had strong recommendations against treatment, conditional recommendations against treatment, then there was a group in the middle that was pretty inconclusive, and then they had conditional recommendations for and strong recommendations for treatment. So throughout the video, I'll start off with the treatment options that potentially are not so beneficial, and then we'll work towards the best treatment options for your osteoarthritis. There is a link to these guidelines in the description below, so feel free to have a look at your leisure. They have gone through every single treatment option available. Some are quite common and some are not so common. So in today's video, I'm going to touch on the ones that I get asked most about as a clinician and hopefully the ones that you are most interested in as well. We're going to start off with the strong recommendations against. Now, there were a couple of things that stuck out for me. The first one was the use of opioids, both orally and transdermally. They are the pain patches that you can put on your skin. They are some of the strongest medication that you can take and include things like codeine-based medications, fentanyl, and morphine. Now, the research suggests that, firstly, they're often not that helpful in relieving pain, um, and there is a lack of high-quality evidence with regards to their long-term use. We also know that the stronger medications tend to have more severe side effects. The second one in this category was the use of joint arthroscopies. Now they used to be exceptionally common and they were often referred to as, as a clean out or a wash out of the joint. So a surgeon would go in using keyhole surgery and a camera and remove bits of joint debris or fraying areas of cartilage. We now have a large body of literature that suggests joint arthroscopies are often no better than placebo, prospectively many years down the line, no better than conservative treatment, and in some cases can actually make symptoms worse. As a result, the guidelines do not support either of these treatment options. Moving on to the conditional recommendations against, the first one that I found very surprising was the use of ice. Now, many people use ice for pain relief, but actually the evidence suggested that with regards to osteoarthritis, the use of ice could actually increase the pain that you experience. I would say ice or heat is going to provide some short-term relief at best. So pick whichever you feel is most beneficial, but do bear in mind that ice could apparently make things worse. The use of braces, supports, and taping, particularly for knee osteoarthritis, were also not supported due to the lack of evidence. Also, orthotics, which are sometimes used to offload the medial aspect, again, of the knee joint were not supported either. When it does come to footwear, they did suggest that shock absorbing supportive footwear could help with knee and hip pain. That said, they advised against the use of minimalist footwear or rocker shoes, and I'm afraid high heels are also not advisable. Further interventions in this category included the use of electrotherapy, therapeutic ultrasound, and acupuncture. There were a few other less common medications as well that were included in this category. And like I said earlier, you can find the guidelines in the description below if you'd like to know what they are. On to the gray area in the middle, which they couldn't be conclusive about one way or the other. Now, really the main one and the most common one for me was the use of topical anti-inflammatories. Now, topical anti-inflammatories are the gels or creams that you place directly over the affected joint. And essentially, they couldn't be conclusive about whether they worked or not. Apologies, I'm interrupting just for a second to say if you're enjoying this video and you would like to know more about osteoarthritis and all other things, pain and rehabilitation, then hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time we release a new video, which we do once a week. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of this one. Other treatments that also painted a fairly hazy picture were the use of capsaicin, 
PRP injections, and also a number of different herbal remedies. Now onto the stuff that could help you if you have osteoarthritis. Now the first thing on the list was cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT. Now this is a psychological intervention that can help challenge negative or unhelpful beliefs or behaviors. And the guidelines in this instance suggest that it can be helpful, but would recommend using it in conjunction with an exercise program. Second on the list were different exercises. So station recycling, yoga and aquatherapy, or exercises in the pool. Now, it was suggested they could all be helpful, but they did recommend making sure they were individualized programs with specific goals for the individual's needs and expectations. It was also suggested that massage and manual therapy could help. Now, there is an abundance of research around these sorts of interventions in relation to osteoarthritis, but also many other conditions as well. And the general consensus is that they can help, but generally only with short-term pain relief and should not be used in isolation. They should be an adjunct in conjunction with, again, some sort of rehabilitation or exercise program. We mentioned earlier that ice was not recommended, but the guidelines do suggest that heat can provide some short-term pain relief. I have found this anecdotally as well. People tend to find it more practical, more soothing, and it can help with that joint stiffness after you've been sat down in one position for a prolonged period of time. For those of you experiencing slightly higher levels of pain, the guidelines did suggest that walking aids could be helpful. Now, a lot of people don't like using them because they perceive them as a loss of independence or they think their mobility is going to gradually get worse. But definitely for a short period of time to try and offload the affected joint, you might find it helpful to use either a walking stick or a crutch. We've discussed topical anti-inflammatories, but oral anti-inflammatories tend to be more beneficial. Having said that, the guidelines do recommend taking them at a low dose for a short period of time and then discontinuing them if you don't feel like they're working. And the reason for this is that there are side effects associated with anti-inflammatories such as gastrointestinal issues, cardiovascular issues and renal problems as well. It was also mentioned that a steroid injection could be appropriate for some individuals. Having said that, it's very difficult to know if they are going to work or how long they're going to work for. And as with anything invasive, there are small side effects associated with an injection, things like infection, swelling and bruising after you've had one. The two best things that you can do if you have osteoarthritis in your knee or hip are land-based exercise and weight management, if that applies. With regards to land-based exercise, this can come in the form of resistance training or muscle strengthening exercises. Walking or Tai Chi was also found to be really helpful. Now it was recommended regardless of age, severity of disease and or pain and function. The idea is that your joints need load in order to function properly. Yes, they can wear and change over time, but they also repair. And loading the joint can facilitate this healing process. We also know that if you have a good level of muscular strength around the joint, that can help to offload the joint slightly when you're moving around and doing your activities day to day and decrease the amount of stress going through the joint and subsequently help the amount of pain that you experience. As always, the guidelines highlight the importance of having a specific exercise program that is tailored to your needs and that is centered around your goals and what you want to get back to doing. The program also needs to be progressed over a period of time, thinking about dosage, frequency, and the intensity of how you're completing the exercise program. When it comes to weight loss, we know that hips and knees are weight-bearing joints. Now there are a couple of factors that increase the chances of you having pain in that joint if you are overweight. One, we obviously know there's more stress going through the joint, but actually the recent literature has suggested that it might not be the mechanical stress, but more the metabolic changes that occur in your whole system that can affect your joint and the cartilage. The guidelines do suggest that if you are considered overweight or obese, that aiming to lose between five and 7.5% of your body weight could be helpful in pain reduction. 
They also suggested that given the correlation between weight and osteoarthritis, that if it was safe and healthy to do so, losing more than that could be recommended. Thank you very much for watching. As well as the guidelines, there are some other useful links in the description below to help you manage your osteoarthritis at home. If you are new to the channel, then do hit the subscribe button over there so you get notified every time we release a new video, which we do every week. And if you're feeling really generous, then you can hit that like button as well to let us know you've enjoyed the content. If you have found today's video useful, you may also like the video that I have done on how to manage an osteoarthritic flare up. And on the channel, you can find a whole playlist on how to manage your osteoarthritis at home. Until next time, I will see you again very soon.